What, like I, I saw was, it. Yeah, I, I get excited. You jumped up, yeah. Before they even said yes. my name, because I'm like, yes. it, it had, it, it's got to be me. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was, uh, when they said 98, 92, I was like, whoa, this is, this wouldn't be good. Yeah. If it went the other guy's way. And, you know, it had gone the other, that, yeah, I, I, I was on the, you know, right side of that decision, but I was on the wrong side of a lot of decisions in my career. And, one of my last fights in Germany, I went over there. Um, Bridge. Dominic Bridge. And, I mean, I just thought I just just beat this guy pretty handily. You know, and the Italian judge had it a, a draw. Um, and the other ones, it was like they had him winning. That was majority decision. Hands down. Yeah. Majority so decision. So it was majority, yeah. And that's kind of one, one of the signs that made me retire. I'm like, well, you know, Whoa. power, you're born with power, you know. You're born with speed, but you could do, I think, more with for speed than power. Um, and I just didn't have that natural power. I just I wasn't born with it. So, you know, if I'm going to have to go to people's hometown and I can't knock them out, I mean, how am I going to win? Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? I noticed in that fight, in the, uh, was it 12 rounds? Yeah. yeah 12th round, yeah. Yeah, in the 12th round, I watched it closely. With a minute and a half left, you heard him. Yeah. You, you had a right. You had a, a, a right that hurt him. And I was like, oh, he's hurt. He's hiding it. I know. You know, I should have pressed it a little bit more. Because he, 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 he almost like lost his will right there. It was like, oh, no, this, you got this. I remember the first round I came out, and by the end of the first round, his eye was all swollen, and he was kind of beat up. <laughs> and like, he was kind of like a pretty kid, you know? And I'm yeah, just yeah. like, you know, this guy's in a fight. Yeah, he had and the slick back hair. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. yeah. Uh, and God, I was just, I was having so much fun in there that night. And, uh, you, you know, were cut up though too. Yeah, no, I was I was in good shape. Yeah, I was in great shape. No, I mean you were cut up, weren't you, on the face? Didn't you? Not, or was that not the, really? Uh, that was the uh, duddy fight. The duddy fight I had a bad yes. cut. Okay. Yeah, Britch, I was pretty. I came out. Yeah. In, in okay shape, which was you know I got cut a lot, but in that fight I was, I, was, I remember just having so much fun. I could have felt like I could have fought thirty rounds that night. I was actually just having so much fun. So and maybe I should have I, I should have pressed on the gas more because he was just. He was hanging on by a thread. He, I'm telling you, and that's, that's what I, round. yeah, and that's what I tell guys in the gym now, is you got to empty your tank. Yeah, you know, I, I, I didn't empty the tank. I had more. It doesn't matter if I'm in better shape than you. If you empty your tank and I have half a tank left, then, then you're gonna beat me. That's interesting that you bring that up because, um, are you? Uh, my question is, are you teaching your kids now based off of your experience of the things that you didn't do? Like you noticed, maybe some things I could have done better. Are you pushing kids harder? Oh, totally. Well, I always train hard, but you know, it's more things that, you know, when you're a coach, you have the bird's eye view. Right. You could see things you don't see as a fighter. When you're a fighter, you just train, train, train. And I would train so hard, but I, I didn't always train smart. And, you know, looking back, and I feel like no one even looked at me at the gym for the first couple of years. I went in there and just trained myself and learned by sparring and learned from any way I could. Um, so I definitely try to give people a lot of feedback. And, you know, if you talk to my coaches, they'd probably say that maybe that I didn't listen well. Because going in there, I don't remember having a plan or thinking. I just remember kind of going in there fighting. Yeah. You know, and I just, I wish now that I'd watch videos and been more strategic and thought about doing things rather than just go and just try to just go and impose your will, you know. Well, when, when was this? This was the uh, early 2000s then? Yes. Well, I was in the... Amateurs since the '90s, I think. Gosh, okay. maybe '97 was my first fight. I'd have been maybe not, maybe '96. I was, I think I was 12. Yeah, I think maybe '96 was my first amateur fight. Uh, but then you know, all throughout the the '99, 2000, 2001, I, I turned pro in 2003. Okay, so it took seven years before you yeah. turned well, pro. I was 11 when I started boxing. Oh, okay. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, turn pro. Well, these Mexicans, I tell you, they do it. Yeah, Canelo, I think was gosh, he was fifteen or sixteen. Yeah, so he was really young. That just blows my mind. Yeah, I mean, what are they fighting cab drivers at that point? It must be. Yeah. Are they just getting them in the ring to? Yeah, I don't know. It's a whole different culture down there. I fought Chavez Junior down there, but I really don't know because now that's a fight that's interesting. I watched that fight. Yeah, I I, I bet a lot of people are saying, "Hey, Billy, uh, I think you got." I think you got had on that one. It was, you know, it was really close. I, 
I couldn't say I got had. It was more that it, it was close. You know, I think that if obviously the fight was in Youngstown, Ohio, that I probably would have won, you know. But being in Mexico, like, I think it was a close fight. Maybe he won, you know. Yeah, you're in Culiacan, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. You're, not, but you're, it was, you're not winning. No, the whole situation <laughs> of the fight, I don't know if I ever told you the story. No, 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 no. So I get there. Uh, and like I said, it's a, the fight's at 160. And, and nowadays, you know, this is 2011. Chavez was undefeated. He didn't have a bad reputation. Yeah, he was 41-0 and at that time. Yeah, and he the fight after he beat me, he fought for the world title and won. So I was the fight. Right. He had to beat me to get the world title shot. So, uh, you know, so we didn't have the reputation for not making weight. So anyways, we're down there, and the fight's weight's 160. So like I said, when I'm in shape, I'm no more than 155. Right. So I weigh in first. I jump on the scale, and it, I'm 155, and it, it, the guy, they say 160, you know, which is fine. I, I don't care because the fight's at 160. Okay. If they want to announce me at 160 so it doesn't look like I'm a small guy and it helps, right. the, that's fine. Yeah. Then he jumps on the scale, and that needle bounced up to the top. Like he was so heavy, it just it was like a rock. You put a piece of concrete on there, with I mean, just. Do you know his weight? Did you know? Oh his I, no, I, he was heavy, real heavy. Yeah. So all of a sudden he jumps on. And they yell one sixty in Spanish, and all, I'm me and my manager Pat Nelson. Uh, he was actually the reason I moved. I, I moved down here. He lives in Florida. Um, we're going nuts. We're like, no, bo- this is this is ridiculous. He just missed weight. The thing. Then as soon as he get off, he's chugging. So we're going nuts. We're gonna. We're not fighting. All of a sudden, um. Oh. I want. I don't want to say any names because a lot of these guys are still around right now, yeah, you know. Yeah. But one no, of the big, right. one of the big guys, uh, um, you know, I think it was. Well, I tell you Gold what, if you, if you say one of the names, the <laughs> podcast will take off. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, what, what they'll, shut you, they'll shut you. They'll shut. They'll shut a boxing club down, and the podcast will shoot through the roof. <laughs> I'm grinning from ear to ear. I love yeah. these stories. No, so one of the guys goes, "We'll take care of it. We'll take care of it. It's okay. It's okay." He's he's kind of saying, "We'll give you know." So they came in my hotel room. I think they gave me. Gosh, it might it was either five or ten thousand cash, oh, and I was like, yeah, you know, yeah. I thought I was rich with that. Right. And here right. he is, probably made I think a half a million dollars, and the whole, you know, I could probably could have stuck him up for at least twenty five. <laughs> right. <laughs> when I look back, like man, you way too cheap. So, so I I would probably say it was one sixty four or five when he weighed, and then by the time you we weighed in at like one in the afternoon, yeah. we fought the next night at eight or nine p.m. Yeah. So he probably was 170, He's got a good seven, 78. He had to have been 30 hours to rehydrate. Right. And I'm at 155 eating breakfast. So just, you know, <laughs> and so when you watch the video, like, it, like we don't even look like we belong in the same ring. No. Again. And that was the problem when I got in there with him. I was strong, but I obviously I couldn't hurt him. And he just every time I hit him, he just walked right through it. Yeah. So I, 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 w- I was boxing. But great. you were tagging him. I was tagging him. He really I was pretty slick. He was having a hard time hitting me. But and. and his punches didn't hurt either, but it was just like, I think the size, the size just matter. Cause normally when somebody's taller, you know, they have the skinnier legs or they have the, yeah. they're not the smaller frame. This guy's taller than me. His legs are bigger than me. His shoulders are bigger than me. He was just a big guy. Yeah. It's like hitting a wall. Yeah. Really? That you're, if you're not going to hurt them, you're just going to try to tag them. That, you know, that's the, and that's like, I tell the guys this, I said, when you walk in a ring and you know that you can't hurt the guy, like, yeah. It takes like a certain amount of balls to do that, because like yeah. I know I'm not gonna just clip a guy and knock him out. Yeah, uh, that's why I had so many rounds. Me and me and uh, Pavlik were talking, and I fought more rounds than him. Yeah, because everything I'd win, even when I fought a, a guy that wasn't great, I'd go eight rounds with him or ten right. rounds with him because right. I just I'd win a hundred and ninety. Right, outbox him, but I, I just I, I think I had four or five, maybe five knockouts. Was it? Yeah, what um what was like your coming out? fight for you boy well you know when i turned pro you, you fought some pretty tough dudes yeah i think what put me on notice was um you know my first couple of fights i was with a promotional group out of chicago and they did a good job i i think i was on tv remember um tuesday night fights with sean o'grady oh yeah yeah so i was yeah. on there my third or fourth fight uh in chicago and i won i think i was i just turned 19 a month or two before it was really kind of cool to be on tv sure at that age oh yeah and then it was just to the point where I ended up getting a loss early. I was like seven and one or seven and two, and they just started kind of throwing me in there with everybody. I remember I fought Yori Boy Campus, who you know I fought. Oh yeah, he fought I Trinidad. He fought yeah. Delahoya. He yeah. fought. He was a world champion. I was twenty one or two, and I was like twelve and three or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he came to Young. I fought him in Youngstown. I lost six rounds to four, oh. but just like, and and you know. 
I had lost fights, but that was the first time I was ever hurt. I mean, this guy yeah. hurt me. I was peeing blood. I wouldn't go home after the fight because my face was such a mess. I didn't want my mom to see me. No so I stayed at my buddy's house for, I remember, like four days. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were in the hospital. No, no, yeah. I, sh- I should have been in the hospital. I'll, that brings me to another story. I'll, I'll yeah, get to that I later. <laughs> um, <laughs> Boxing stories are always Oh, are, are I'll always tell you great. a quick one. So, you know, we're talking about fights I lost. I do want people to know I, I won 25 and I lost 11. So I won more than twice than I lost. But I did lose some fights. And part of that's because I fought the best in the world, you know? Right. So I'm in the Cayman Islands fighting the champion down the the Caribbean champion. Uh, this guy was just just a monster, you know? Um, gosh, I, I don't remember his name offhand. Um, really just sick, just big guy. Not Kirkland, is No, it? not Kirkland. He was... He was tough too, oh, but um, dude, he, he, yeah, he, he was, was something else. Um, I'll have to look this guy's name up. But anyways, I'm down there fighting him. Only fight I ever got knock, knocked down and hurt. John, uh, look look up his name. Yeah, if you look at my boxer, you should be able to find him. Um, so anyways, I go down there and I'm came around. I'm excited. This is great. I'm thinking it's gonna be like the Bahamas or something. I go in there. <laughs> we're staying at a hotel, which is nice on the beach. We end up fighting at some like gymnasium. It's like a bunch of like all Aborigines in the middle of the island. No kidding. And the first couple rounds I'm giving to this guy, it's like I'm winning on the scorecard. All of a sudden, I get head butted right in my nose. My nose splits right down the middle. I mean, there was I had to get like collagen shots and crazy stuff done to it after, but. Uh, the next round, I, I walked in an uppercut. I got knocked out. I mean, I, I remember walking right into the shot and getting up, and all those cliches ring true, like, you got your bell rung or you got buzzed, because I heard a bell ring, and I, I remember, like, hearing a buzz, <laughs> and I remember, like, just saying, uh, you know, getting up in the... I, I don't really remember much about it. Did but you see stars? That's a cliche. <laughs> I think I did. Like, you, 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 it's almost like a flat, like a, a flash. But anyways, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting in my corner and I'm saying, Jack, I'm ready. I'm, I'm good. He said, Billy, man, the fight's over. <laughs> he said, we got, we got stopped last <laughs> round. I had no, but then, so I'm split from my nose across, all across my nose. It was, I wish I had a picture to show you guys how bad it was. You can still see the scar now on the bridge of my yeah, nose. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're saying, we got to get this guy some stitches. And my manager and my trainer, Jet, they, they wanted to go out and party. He said, oh, I'll throw a butterfly and it'll be fine. Come on. So I ended up leaving there with a freaking butterfly on my nose and no stitches. So <laughs> was there a long-lasting effect because oh, of that? I got my, basically, <laughs> when your scar is that bad, it was probably, I'm going to say, you know, and I don't like to exaggerate. I never say the best ever. I would say legitimately between a 16th, I would say, and an eighth off my nose was the scar protruded upwards Oh, because it's just the way it healed yeah. with the bunching there was just like I, it was like almost I was wearing a nasal strip over my yeah. nose yeah and then thank god I had some guys when I got back to Youngstown they gave me shots of collagen in it yeah. and knocked it down and then it was st- just from years of not getting hit it's gotten better your body kind of has a, your body wants to be healthy wants to heal but I was I'll show you I mean for five years after that my nose is a mess because you know but yeah. put a butterfly on well, it well now what what fight was this in your career um, this was like within 10 gosh, fights. I think I was, I think I was maybe my 15th fight. I'm trying to find okay, this stuff. So, so when you fought Kirkland, I, I remember watching that fight. you were, you, you had a couple losses at that. Oh, fight. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I, um, he was a beast that back then when look, you fought him because okay. he was an up and comer at you that know, time. And, wasn't and he? it's hard to, it's hard to actually, was it Dominic Bridge? No, Bridge, no, 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 Bridge no. is the one we were talking about in Germany. Um, it's from the Cayman Islands. Yeah, the guy in the Cayman Islands. I got it right here. Um, I'm pulling him up right now. I'm looking at my box rec. His name was. Now was he a name back then? Charles Whitaker. Whitaker. Charles. Okay. Whitaker. Yeah, right. he was. He was. Yeah, he fought for the WBC title. And you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. When you go back to two thousand and seven, when I fought Kirkland, he was a monster. He yeah, was the Mike Tyson of the day. Yeah. He was seventeen and zero with sixteen knockouts. That's he, when you fought him? When I fought him. He had knocked out Joel Julio, who was HBO's kind of the next Felix Trinidad right. from Puerto Rico. Uh, and this guy was buzzing. He was, I mean, good fighters he was blowing through. Yeah, he yeah, was he blowing was. through really good I remember. top prospects. And and he was a surefire champion, you know. And then he beat me. Uh, I, I never I fought, you know, I, I gave him a great fight. Uh, they it got I was fine. I was never hurt. They stopped it in the eighth just on cuts. Um, and he was winning the fight. You know, I might have won a couple rounds, but um, he ended up going to prison shortly after he beat me. 
and he was never the same. He did like three or five years. Is that when that all went yep. down? Okay. Right after my fight, he might have had one more and went to prison. Did he have the the woman trainer? Yeah, Ann Wolf. Ann Wolf was yeah, in Ann Wolf, I right. remember sitting. Uh, she was in this corner. She, yeah. boy, she's a tough customer. Yeah, yeah. She is. <laughs> and we had a, and he was a tough guy. He had, yeah. I think he had been in trouble growing up, and he had done maybe a month or so. But he went to prison, prison after he fought me, and he came out, uh, and that's when he got knocked out by the Japanese guy, and then he bounced back and beat. Angulo, remember Angulo? Yes. Angulo was a yes. monster at 154. Yes, he, was, he was. He was almost like a unified champion at 154. Alfredo? Alfredo yeah. Angulo, who was a monster, and he Kirkland knocked him out. He's still fighting. Yeah, he still is. But he was never the same. No. He just never the same. Um, he was, I mean. He wore the collar. You, you don't know what happened. Yeah. You know, you don't know what happened. But, uh, I mean, you take James Kirkland 2007 that day, he'd have beat anybody at 154. Hands yeah, down. He, he was, was 21, a, yeah. 22. He was a young Tyson. Yeah, he was. I mean, he's a young Tyson. And now looking back, you see the guys, you know, that beat him, but they didn't beat him in 2007. Right, right. He, so. he, yeah, he was a knockout artist at that time. I remember that. And then he just drifted off the map. I didn't know he went to prison. He went to prison for a while. Okay. Yeah. 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 And Ann Wolf, boy, I'll tell you, she was, she was, um, she had him doing barbaric training, it oh, seemed like. Pushing trucks. I mean, just doing. Yeah. He was a monster because my conditioning was great. And one of my biggest strengths was I was really strong. So it's kind of like, you know, I, I didn't hit hard, but I was strong. So there's a difference. Like I could back people up. I would just, I was strong. They would back up. But my punch, you know, and I remember being there with Kirkland. I just couldn't believe he had only been, when I fought him, our plan was let's get this guy late. I had been, you know, I only had 16 <laughs> fights, but I already fought campus. Let's get this guy late. So in other words... You're going to have to take punishment. Right, to get and, in the later rounds, because yeah. he'd only been two or three rounds. Yeah. And he's blown people. He's like a buzzsaw, Come, yeah. just like a buzzsaw. So we're saying he's been never been past two or three rounds. I fought Yori Boy Campus 10 rounds. I'd fought Charles Whitaker. I mean, I was 13 and three, but I had been in there with some yeah. really, yeah. they just threw me to the wolves, you know? Yeah. Um, so I remember like round four or five, like, oh God, isn't this guy supposed to be getting tired or isn't he supposed to be? <laughs> and he just wasn't getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> and you know and it was all right he's a tank he was a tank he yeah. was strong he hit hard he was fast he might have been like i think what are you thinking at that point i mean here you got a tank that's supposed to get tired doesn't get tired well it was kind of the hope that he would get tired. we didn't know right. but he I, had only gone two or three rounds so i'm thinking round seven eight that's my time i'm gonna pick it up uppercuts he was throwing everything yeah i remember in the in the one of the rounds uh a mouthpiece was down and uh they all thought it was mine, and it was his mouthpiece. Oh, I remember and, that. And the whole yes, crowd yes. started cheering because I yes. knocked his mouthpiece yes. out, you know. Um, but, yeah, just, you know, funny looking back on things like that. It's, you know. Yeah. Great wait, wait, what's up, John? You keep looking at me. You haven't introduced John. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. We'll put it on the title, but, yeah, this Billy Lyle, <laughs> middleweight, junior middleweight and middleweight professional boxer. Uh, what was your career? Uh, what did, when did your career span? 2003 to 2010? 2003 to 2012. 12. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, because you fought uh, Britch in 11, right? Uh, yeah, the fall yeah, of 2011. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, yes, we're here with Billy Lyle. You want me to give a, a formal introduction? Yeah, just for... Uh, I knew we were going to title it and... Yeah. And play into it. So, But that's uh, the producer doing his job. But just to say his name out loud... For the very good for the kids out there, <laughs> Billy Lyle. He's actually like my boxing coach, if you will. Um, so um, I respect him a lot, and I wanted him on the show. I know he has a lot to offer. Um, we're going to get into um, his his YouTube channel and what everyone can see from all around the world now. Billy, look at that. Yeah, it's really exciting. And then he, ha you also have an app that's out. What's the name of it? The Sweet Science. The name of the app is the Sweet Science Plus app. Plus. And I'm actually okay. the exciting part is I'm partnered with uh, Kelly the Ghost Pavlik. Um, you know, a good friend of mine, uh, unified world champion from Youngstown. Yes. So we kind of developed a boxing fitness app. Uh, yeah, you tell know, me about it. Tell me about it. You know, the app's really exciting. So, um, you know, like you guys were saying, I have a gym currently now in Naples, um, and it's it's boxing with some fitness too. You know, we right. try to. Um, you know, we try to get the full spectrum of people down there. Um, so the app consists, it's traditional boxing. It's based on a boxing workout, uh, three minutes of work, one minute rest. So everything we do, every exercise we do, we do for three minutes. And then there's a rest period in between. There could be 30 seconds or a minute. Um, so we have five kind of full body exercises. And then we have five 
um, boxing combinations every day. So the cool part about it is each week, Kelly Pavlik kind of introduces a new topic or new theme we're going to work on. And he teaches that with a video demonstration. He'll say, okay, guys, we're learning the jab straight right hand. And he'll teach that in the video series. And then each day that week, there's five different boxing exercises having to do with, oh, nice. with, with, those, with those routines he yeah. taught. And then there's a gif of me throwing the combination so people can see the correct form, the correct sure. way to throw them. And to go along with that, there's also five full body exercises every day. Okay. So, you know, the total workout is 30 minutes, uh, you know, 30 minute a day workout and you're getting 10 rounds of boxing. I'm sorry, five rounds of boxing and five rounds of full body exercises. Well, it's sort of emulating the 10 rounds though. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the the body exercises, is that more of a calisthenic type thing? Really kind of everything. It's, it's, it's great because we have, um, almost some stuff we do at the gym, you know, we might do, you know, it could be something as basic as a squat or, uh, you know, a plank or push up or just a lot of us full bo- just body weight exercises, but we have 109 of them. Oh, yeah. And, That's you know, cool. there's the cool thing is we have an interval timer and a regular timer. So if you're doing something like a burpee, you can't do three minutes worth of burpees. Right. If you're doing them the right way. Right. So you could stick the interval timer on where it's 15 seconds of burpees, 15 second break, 30 second burpees, 30 second break. So they have the option of it, using an interval timer. Exactly. So the interval timer will have, for each exercise, we'll designate, we'll say, which should be a standard timer, interval timer. And people could switch. Oh, so that's nice. number one. Also, number two is that if someone's just not in great shape, maybe a basic exercise that, you know, a guy like you could do no problem in three minutes that they're going to stick that interval timer on so they can kind of take their time and get more sure. more rest. A guy like me. <laughs> now, you look like you're doing all right, too. I think you could handle it. Be truthful. <laughs> <laughs> we want to be authentic on the podcast. <laughs> in, other words, on the way in, here. in other words, Billy's going to come up to you afterwards and say, you need to join the club. <laughs> <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> you come down to the gym, you'll be in for a treat, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a watch. <laughs> he keeps saying in for a treat, but I keep thinking <laughs> it's... <laughs> I won't enjoy it as much as he, he well, says Well, you'll, you'll feel good when you're done. Yes. So what, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So we'll almost kill you, but you'll end up stronger. <laughs> that's why I have to watch. <laughs> so, okay, so you have this. I, I think that's fascinating. You have the interval ch- uh, timer for someone that feels, okay, I can't do the three minutes. I can choose. Boom, right there, say, right on the top. Just click over the interval brilliant. timer. Yeah, I thought that was kind of a, a concept we definitely great. wanted to, to add to it. Yeah, yeah, people have to hear that. I mean, because a lot of what people don't like about exercise or going to clubs, I'm a little embarrassed. You hear you can work out of your home, build up to a certain state, use your your uh, your methods that you have, and build some confidence. Yeah. Before you know it, they they might be at a box. You know, club. absolutely. And you know, my wife's kind of the brains behind it. She, you know, she's she's younger than me, so she knows more about technology you're than smart. me and Kelly. You're, and you're she's smart too, <laughs> buddy. By just by saying that, <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> Um, but anyway, it was her idea. She said, you know, that at home workouts are scheduled to surpass gym memberships, gym workouts, apps are the new biggest workout trend because, you know, everyone's so busy nowadays and, you know, you can get this right in your house. You don't have to go anywhere. You know, by the time, even if the gym's close, you drive 10, 15 minutes there, you park, you walk in, especially up North where it's cold and you get in there, you change your clothes. You're talking in, you know, an hour and a half, probably minimum. Right. Um, so to be able to just, you know, you got kids, you have a family, you're on, a, a, a time schedule to be able to go get your workout in 30 or 40 minutes. You know, that, that, that's something I think more the option, more people are starting yeah. to choose. And they're learning boxing there. It, this isn't a typical, you know, exercise fitness. Right. And, and that's the exciting video. part. I mean, when me and Kelly did it, the first word we thought about is authentic. We want to have yeah. an authentic experience. And Kelly Pavlik and myself, we're not going to go do JC Penny boxing. Right. It's just we wouldn't do it. There's you couldn't pay me to do it. I, I invested too much of my life in the sport to do something that I don't believe in. Right. So you know we we believe in the app. You're getting world class coaching in your living room. A, a world champion, the same guy you saw on pay per view, and you watch fight Bernard Hopkins, and you watch unify the middle divi- weight division, and on the cover of Sports Illustrated, he's teaching you. How, yeah. how to throw a jab, how to throw a right hand. Yeah. And you don't have to go anywhere to get that. That's great. So it's pretty exciting. Now, this, they can find the app on Apple, Apple, Apple. iTunes Store, uh, the, the Sweet Science Plus. Uh, just put it in there and, uh, and we should pop right up. Excellent. Well, I, I know it's going to take off. 
If it's anything like the gym you run, it's going to take off. Yeah. It's Thank just you a, for that. You know, it's just a matter of time and getting a word out there. Now, you, you're also on YouTube. Yeah, so I just kind of created a YouTube channel. Um, uh, you know, partly because there's so many guys down the gym, and it's um, a lot of them just want to know more fundamentals and right. basics. And, you know, I teach it to people, and we go back and look. But if there's a video they can watch, there, there's a reference they can go yes. back to. And yes. a lot of times they're at the gym, and I might tell them something and you know, I've been doing this 26 years or 20, 24 years. So they can, you know, they can go back and look at exactly what am I saying or, or right. just, just rewatch it. I tell them, I, I'm walking around the gym, helping people, giving them advice. Okay, what did he say? Let me go home and rewatch that again. Right, right. So that was the goal. I mean, when I, when I did the YouTube channel, you know, I wanted to do it right. So, you know, we got high quality videos and it was produced and it looks nice and different camera angles so that people could see what I'm talking it about. It is. But it's great. Yeah, thank you very much. But I wanted, I just wanted to help people. And, you know, I'm not, I would never knock anybody else's YouTube channel. But some of the stuff I see on there, it's like, there'll be Joe Smith from, and he's teaching boxing. I'm just like, Actually, and Joe Smith's a good. No, good Joe boxer. Smith's an excellent boxer. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was just, after I said that, I'm thinking that's probably the wrong example. I'll say Joe Blow. Because Joe, Joe, Joe Smith, yeah, there you go. Joe Smith's the guy that, yeah, he's a really good fighter. Uh, so Joe Smith, uh, when you hear this, I wasn't talking about the Joe Smith from Massachusetts. Uh, no, but, um, you know, and I'll see stuff, and there's hundreds yeah. of thousands of views. I'm thinking this is just, some of the stuff I think, it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. The, the, here's what frustrates and this is what I said. I, I won't just make a video to make a video. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have time to do it. I don't care how long my videos are. I'm not trying to reach a timestamp, or I'm not trying to get uh, um, an advertiser. I'm on there. I don't care if my videos, if it's if I can get it done in two and a half minutes, we'll get it done in two and a half minutes. But right. I'm not just going to go up there and just try to get views to get views. Right, right. If I tell you something, it's something you can apply, you can use day one in the gym. It's not theoretical. I've been there. I've done it. I, I know what it's like to be in the ring. Yeah. So I'm not going to tell you something where you're, you're pivoting and doing something that Limonchenko does and has been working on for 23 years. I'm going to give you something where day one you're going to go and spar and you're going to try it and you're going to say, well, that, that worked a bit. That right. works. Right. Yeah, I think, too, you know, with the quality of your uh, YouTube, and I've watched it, um, I, I, it's great. The angles are great. Your instruction's great. It doesn't seem like you had three takes on it. It seems like you just did one take. And when I see one take... I feel it's supremely authentic because it's you talking. That was the fir- that was my first takeaway from the videos. Like that was not auditioned. That that came straight from your mouth. Like, yeah, it wasn't rehearsed is, or anything. No, no, it it was it was beautifully done. And I'm not blowing smoke. I'm not I, I'm not I'm not gonna blow smoke. Going back to what you said about the videos that are out there, I think there's a lot of. I mean, a lot of people want to help people. But some of it's just not done the right way. You know, maybe optics are bad or they don't talk real well. Or, yeah, maybe some of the boxing is really off, like techniques are not well. And that's what bothers probably people like you um, that have been around. But I think for the most part, people want to help. It's just the delivery can be bad. And here you are, been in the business for a long time, put something together real well. People need to go see it. You know, and I'll tell all my listeners, you need to go watch it. You, you just do. And I've been in the gym with you. So I hear you telling me what to do, and I see what you're saying on the, the, the channel. You've told me fundamentals, and I see you saying it right, right on the channel. So it's not like you're telling us one thing and then the world another thing. Well done. Bro. Yeah, no, Bravo, thank bro. you very, very Bravo, much. And I'm bro. just, you know, I'm really excited to share it. I'm excited for, for people to use and for people really – you know, to apply it. Yeah. And I'm excited to make more videos and more detailed videos and more kind of intricate subtleties, yeah. you know, of the sport. And, and, and we'll get there. Yeah, I can't wait to I can't wait to see it, actually. You know, there's a lot of people with the MMA world and, and boxing, I feel, making a comeback. There's a lot of people that want to fight, <laughs> you know. But what do you... Or, let me ask you this, now that I just said that. Um, when you see someone come in the gym, he's a young guy, Maybe make a, a run at boxing. What what is your process in your head? Like you see a young guy come in, do you like do you want to 
Do you want to coddle him for a little bit? Do you say, ah, let's see what this guy's got? Even though he might not have the boxing technique. What's your thinking? You know, it's, I guess it just depends. You know, we have a lot of members just are just there for fitness. So if there's a fitness guy and he's trying to dabble in boxing. Like me. (laughs) No, you're, you're a fighter for sure. (laughs) Everybody knows you're a fighter. Um, you're a fighter that works out, but you're a fighter. Um, but no, but if, if he's just a fitness guy and I get the fitness vibe and he wants to get in there sparring, you know, I don't want to put him in there too deep. I don't want to get him discouraged and I don't want him to get frustrated and quit coming to the gym. Get right. knocked out. <laughs> get knocked out or just get dis- discouraged. Or, but if someone's like a fighter, if they come in there and they want to fight and they want to box, I mean, I have two kids that won, you know, national tournaments in the amateurs. And they've been boxing less than a year. I put them in the ring the first week. That's what you I know, wanted to know. I, yeah. I'll toss them right in there, and we'll, we'll see. We'll go from there because, you know, it's like anything else. You learn the most by doing it. Yeah. And, and they're not going to have the obviously perfect technique when they spar their third day in the gym. Right. But they're tough kids. They want to get in there. Number one, they're going to be bored if they're not in the ring fighting. If they're either going to yeah. fight in the ring, they're going to be outside fighting. Right. We'll get them in the ring and spar. And you just kind of want to see what happens when they get hit. Exactly. And, That's what and, I was saying. And how to. they handle it. And, you know, some guys, oh, they find out real quick it's not for them. <laughs> you know, probably as a business model, it would be better to say, okay, guys, <laughs> your first month is all boxing technique. And then if you sign up again for month two and pay me for month two, I'll let you spar. Right. Then I'll keep them all for more. That, we're, we're fighters down the gym. You know yeah. I mean? They might come and come one day and they spar day three and then they quit and I don't see them again. Have you ever thought of having a model like that? I just can't do it. I have, yeah, yeah, um, you yeah. know, it, that would, that's why I don't, I don't have like a corporate business plan. <laughs> People are probably like, your retention rate is terrible. Your members last average 5.5 days. <laughs> no. And then that's not true. You know, we have so many right. guys like you and guys that are down there for months and years. Um, um, but when a kid's tough and I see something that kind of sparks my eye, if you just see, and you could just hear it on the pad, that pop yeah. that you really can't teach, you know? Yeah. Um, I want to get him and see what he does, and, but I'm not going to throw him in there. You know, if, if he wants to, those are usually the guys that I want to get in. They want to spar their bag in the right. spar. I'll get him in there week one, you know, and just let him, and I won't throw him in there with the best I have. Um, sometimes I'll throw him in there with somebody pretty good and, yeah. and, and see what happens. Um, and then you kind of know, and, but like I was saying earlier, it's, you're going to learn the most by doing it. You know, who do you want to come, uh, you know, Work on your house. An apprentice carpenter that's been in the field with the journeyman for three or four years or some kid in school reading books about how to frame right, a house. Right, right. You want the guy that's done it. So, yeah. you know, we're going to learn the technique and we can tweak some things. But if you if you got it in you and you want to go and I think you can go, we're going we're gonna to get started. Yeah. Now, the amateur world, you have a couple that have won titles? Yeah, I had two brothers, uh, Jesse Paul and uh, Vincente. Uh, won national championships. Oh, they Na- both did. Both national championships. Oh, so, congrats so basically, to them. there's a the whole thing. Yeah, thank you. No, I know that they're really happy and excited yes. and proud. I'm excited for them. Yes, you know? and absolutely. you never know. They're so young. You just you right. never know at this age. Um, but but you know Jesse, I think he's special. You know. Yeah, I noticed that in the gym. Yeah. Um, you could just you know, and I don't want to compare. I'm not going to compare him to anything. Right. I, and trust me, I've seen guys that were just as special that it just doesn't. There's out, there's right. too many variables. You yeah. know, there's too many, and and that's why I would never you know. These guys that aren't experienced in the game of boxing, they'll start telling you they have a 14-year-old that's going to be world champion. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm not going to say that because I'm not going to put that kind of pressure on the kid. And number two, there's, it's just too it's, early. It's too early. Yeah. There's too many things, you know, still ahead to come. Yeah. But, you know, the kid, it was a funny story. His dad brought him in. And his dad doesn't speak hardly any English. So he brings these guys in. He goes, my boys like to fight. Uh, they so like I, to fight I said, great. I said, great. He said, they like to fight. I want to learn. I want to teach them to know how to do it the right way. Then he pulls his phone and he shows me a video. The one kid's like 13 or 14. He's in the backyard, like at a cookout with maybe those little Sugar Ray Leonard gloves on, just oh, fighting an adult in the backyard. No mouthpiece, no headgear. Oh, just kind of giving as good as he's getting. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm like, these guys, like, I got to throw them in. What am I going to do? Like, you know, I got to throw these guys in the right, ring. You have a right. moral obligation yeah. to. You know, and then even, and I didn't even pay a whole ton of attention you know you gotta you gotta prove yourself a little bit i can't you you know i got one set of eyes so you gotta show me something so i they fought their their first fight they fought the sugar bird in florida just the local sugar but there's about 
10 of these Sugar Burt tournaments all over the country. That's great, a pretty big yeah, deal, though, Yeah, right? great tournament, yeah. right? Yeah. And then the winners from all 10 go fight in the Nationals. Right. So they fought in the local one in Punta Gorda. And, you know, there's, but it was pretty big. There were people, teams from Cuba, teams from, you know, a lot of the Latin American teams come to Florida because it's close. So they, <laughs> it was just funny. You know, they just, they, he goes in there and he fought this Cuban kid from Miami. And this kid had the fancy shoes and his name on his trunks and tassels. And he had shorts and tennis shoes on. And he went and just, I mean, he just pummeled this guy. Gave him two standing eight counts and almost knocked him out. Oh, jeez. And I, I, I didn't know because you don't know until they get in yeah, there. Right, right. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, the, he this, likes to fight. This guy's a monster. <laughs> and he's, he's getting, and the, the, I kind of knew something was up. I knew it was either going to go real good or real bad before the fight. So before the fight, you know, I, I spar, you know, I've been in the game my whole life. And I would get really nervous before a fight. Yeah. I just think it's naturally. For me, it was like I would get super duper nervous. I could, I would think about it, and I wouldn't sleep. I'd be walking around pacing. Yeah. I get nervous, and these guys are sitting there outside of the ring, just sitting there like they're sitting there, just you know, having a soda or something. Yeah, Backyard cookout. Just sitting there, not warming up, sitting there calm and cool as collected. They call. It, they just get in the ring and fight. I mean, there's no questions, no, you know, your first fight. All these right, people. Right. There's there was it was such a big term. There's three rings going on at the same time. Oh, geez, there was like yeah. 120 fights. There's 40 fights in each ring. There's people everywhere, all over the place. Medals, belts, some of the best kids in the, the country, and they're sitting there, calm and cool, not blinking, sitting down, not asking any questions, not caring about uh, caring. <laughs> they just got in the ring and fought. They don't think they broke a sweat. I kept asking if they wanted to warm up. They just kind of looked at me like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm warm. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> I, it's, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. They're just ready to go fight. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So we, we, maybe we should have them on with you one day. Yeah, they, they're good kids. You know, I'm just, I'm oh, really I like proud them. of them. And oh. I got a whole, you know, not just them, I got a whole bunch of really good kids. And they're just, what's exciting about it is they're, you know, they're they're good to everybody. They're just good to the adults. They're good to the younger kids. They're just, you know, we got a really special group of young men down there. Yeah. And I, I, I'd like to think that part of it is, you know, how they're trained and how they behave and kind of the, what the expectations for them. Well, you, you know, you got to look as far as the coach. I know you don't want to give yourself props. <laughs> I know you're a modest guy. I know that it, it's a good quality, but you know, they're being trained they're being led by their leader. Yeah. And, no, there's a lot of people down there helping guys like you and guys like, you know, the other, um, Jeff, you know, the other Jeff that's down there helping. Yeah. So a lot of people, you know, are invested in these kids and want to see them, and the lessons you learn in boxing, they transcend to your whole life. Yeah. You know, you learn self-reliance to rely on yourself. And they'll get, I'll get a kid in the ring, and once in a while, they'll get in the ring, and, and you know, halfway through the round, they're getting beat up, and they look at me. I said, don't look at me, man. I can't help you. I've heard that. When you're in that I've ring, you say you're that. in the <laughs> ring. Like, you, you, got, you either take a knee, and you, you quit, you quit, and then you quit, which is, you know, it happens. Right. Not that you quit, but you just... You got beat. You know, or you're going to try to f figure it out. And that's the problem with a lot of kids these days where you got to figure it out. Like no one's up. You can't ask Siri. You can't ask, you know, right, right. you can't Google the answer. Right. You're in that right. ring and you're out of gas. No, I've heard you many of times. And someone's trying to hit you in the head. You better hold them. You better, you better spit your mouth, whatever you got to do. Now, don't get me wrong. If a kid's in the corner and he's getting pummeled and he's not going to get, I'm going to jump in there. I, I've stopped a couple sparring sessions like that. Yeah. I'm not going to let somebody get their beat up for no reason. But if you're a little bit gassed and you're looking for a way out, yeah. or you got a little bit of blood on your nose and you're looking for a way out, no, I've heard you. Yeah. I've heard you say, "Figure it out." Yeah, a few times, <laughs> and, I, and I just chuckle while I'm hitting the bag. And then when the exciting thing, then they, when they do figure it out, and they they get through the round, and they didn't think they could, then other things in life come up, and most of them aren't going to be professionals. They're not going to make a lot of money. Right. But other things come up, and they say, "Deal with it." I can figure it out. Right. Maybe I don't know the answer now, but I'll figure it out. Whatever problem you have in life, you know, you might have a big problem and you think to yourself, I can't solve this big problem, but there's something you can do about that problem. Right. So you do what you can do at that point. Well, I think the and then when you do that, then you do what can we do next. And pretty soon that big problem is yes. no longer there. Yeah. It's smaller or it's taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. I think the fight game transcends so much uh, of lessons in life that nowadays... I don't think a lot of people want to even face that. This gener I, I hate saying it, but this generation has just got so soft. And, and, you know, you put them in, I don't care, you put them in martial arts, you put them in boxing, something in the combat world, I think positive things are going to happen with those. Yeah, I really think so. I mean, I just go do what I do and the way I was raised and the way I train. 
and people think it's like, oh, this is great. This is it's a this different is old generation. School. This is like going, you know. And I'm like, well, this is just the way we do things here. You yeah. know, it's the way, and it's not it it's not for everybody, which is which is right. okay. It it doesn't have to be for everybody. Right. right. But um, but if it's for you, then you're gonna get the real thing. Yeah. What do you think of the fighters nowadays? This generation. Uh boy, you know, they're great. <laughs> I mean, they're super talented. Yeah, they really are. And, um, you know, there's some really good fighters out there now. I think that um, boxing is kind of making a comeback. I think there's more people doing it. Um, well, the whole fight scene uh, is is making a comeback. Yeah. the heavy. It seems like the way the heavyweight division goes is, is the way boxing, how boxing goes. Yeah, for the most part. You know, in the 80s, I think it was the middleweights with Hagler and Leonard and Hearns. Yeah. But, Really, you know, you think boxing, you think Ali, heavyweights. Yes. And those guys, I, I'll tell you from experience, they make a lot more money than everybody else. <laughs> yeah. My manager would always want heavyweights. Oh, I don't want anybody but heavyweight, you know, because their purse was always twice everybody yeah. else's. He was a businessman. Yeah, of, yeah, of course. Businessman <laughs> slash trainer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but what, no, the, the fighters are great. I think that... Um, what do you think of Deontay? Deontay, boy, I, he just, you know... He's an enigma to me because he seems like he doesn't have the technique. But he's knocking. Well, I'll tell you something about it, which I think is 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 it's different than when I fought. I think that because of MMA, MMA people throw and it punches different angles. Yeah, they do. And now I'm seeing when I was boxing, it was a straight right hand. Yeah. There was no overhand. There was yeah. no right hook. It was a straight right. You threw it as straight as possible. That was just how they learned in the 50s, 60s. Yep. And straight right hand. I remember I went to Germany and I almost got killed because I'm fighting this guy, and you know, I, I could I could slip the, the straight right or I could parry the straight right. He's coming around my jab and hit me in the temple with an overhand right. I never seen anything like it. I never seen it sparring. I never seen it in another fight anywhere. Sebastian Silvestre, I fought for the IBF oh, world title. He was title. a champion, yeah. IBF world champion. And he just kept hitting me with his overhand. I mean, it was it was a nightmare. That was I remember after the fight I'm holding the ice in my temple thinking, my, my head's gonna explode. And but then after that, I started trying to implement that overhand, mm -hmm. and I see that with Wilder that, you know, he, everyone has their own style, and, I'm, and that's kind of the way I train my fighters too. You know, you want to throw the straight right hand. The, the quickest point between yeah. two people is the straight line, obviously. Right, right. But sometimes coming from different angles isn't a bad thing. Right. You right. see, you, you throw from different angles, and you keep because guys get so locked in the things coming straight, they could slip, slip, block, block. You start putting things around the guard and do different things and like triple G over the top. Yeah. You know, some of those Eastern European guys have made it a lot more normal. And I think it's great. And I think it, it really adds the boxing because there's more strikes now. It's almost like it's more dangerous now than when I was doing it because, I mean, the punches come from different angles. Yeah. And now when guys come in the gym, like, I just think that if I'd have been training guys 10 years ago, I'd say, throw that right hand straight, throw it straight. Because that's the way I was raised. And they would maybe never get a chance to throw it. Some of these guys, they just have dynamic power with the hook. Yeah, yeah. Well, Deontay, his last fight, who did he fight? Um, uh, or was, was it, it Ortiz? Ortiz, yeah. They had the rematch. They did. He threw a straight right. That yeah, that was, was straight. straight. That was straight. And was he straight. never throws straight no. right. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, he just, you know, he just has just freakish power. I mean, yeah. he's 210 pounds. I don't think I he's know. that big. but And that's what's interesting about his next fight with Fury. Somebody asked me about the other day, who's going to win? Who do you think? And I said, well, <laughs> if it go, you know, it's, if Wilder catches him, he's going to knock him out. And if yeah. he doesn't, Fury will probably outbox him. I mean, kind of like the first fight. Yeah. And, the, and the, what Deontay said, uh, something really kind of cool. <laughs> he said, if you fight me, you have to be perfect for 12 rounds. Yeah. He said, There's I just got to He said, that, I yeah. just got to get lucky once. Yeah. And you'll watch his fights. I've seen it a couple of times where it's a ho hum fight. You go to the fridge to grab grab a you know and a, they're out a, 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 and the fight's over. You come back and you're watching a, a, re, a highlight of it. Oh my! And the the, the whole six rounds was boring. Yeah, uh, he's pawing his jab, pawing, but but he's smart. And I think you got Mark Breland in his corner, who just is a tremendous yeah. coach, a former Olympian. Yes. So I mean, he's getting great training. But uh, I but like Wilder in the next fight. You over Shreer? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. I don't think Fury's going to be able to get away with the same thing again. Yeah. I think Wilder's getting You know, I'll tell you what's really special about Wilder, and, you know, it kind of gets into, you know, whatever, but that man believes in himself. Yeah, he does. And when you believe in yourself, and you really believe in yourself, gosh, you're really hard to beat. Talking about before, we, we brought this up, McGregor and uh, Bud. <laughs> he, uh, Billy says he's going to go to Vegas. 
<laughs> I'm now, just, wait, you're going to go to Vegas when they fight in the MMA fight. MMA fight. What well, boxing? Everyone knows if that they would. do this. I, I'm, I'm really hoping they do it because I'll tell you what, Terrence. That's but, funny but, that a boxer says <laughs> he hopes a boxer will fight in an MMA fight. I, I do because I'll tell you, Terrence Crawford is the best pound for pound fighter in the world. There's not a close second. The guy's phenomenal. He's so underrated. What he does in the ring is incredible. He is underrated. And he is, he's mean. It's hard. I mean, he gets in the ring, like, he has fun. Like, he wants to hurt you. Like, he's yeah. not going to out point you. It's a you. switch he, that must go off because he seems like a real you know, cool dude. Oh, I mean, yeah. and I mean, he just, he is all his, all his, all his ducks in a row. And he goes in there and he just, I mean, he's a mean guy. He has fun beating people up. <laughs> <laughs> like he'll go. I remember he was fighting the one gold medalist. Uh, guy won a gold medalist from the Dominican Republic. Oh yeah, Gamboa. No, not Gamboa. No, Gamboa. That was a good fight too. He fought Diaz. Uh, I forget the first name. Uh, really good fighter. Anyways, he's beating him up and he's toying with me, telling him, I, I want to punish him. I want to hurt him. Like he just and when he gets hit, he'll fight guys that are punchers. He could outbox. He'll get hit and he'll smile and he'll want to. He'll, yeah. he'll, he likes it. He likes the fight. He's a tough. He's the type of guy that beat up everybody in the streets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he did or not, but that type of guy. Yeah. And he'll go in the ring he and beat, beat, story, you, up, beat right. you up in the ring, too. Yeah. You go in the ghetto, he's the toughest guy in the ghetto. Yeah. You go to any 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 rough area of any big city in, in, in the country, he's the guy, hey, you don't want to run into blood. Now, that's a guy uh, technically in the ring. Isn't he the one that switches softball orthodox? Yeah, all the time. I love he's, that. He's, fun. he's so fluid. He's so fast. He's phenomenal. And I think that, you know, he hasn't got the name of some other guys because it's just not his personality to talk trash. Do you Every think time, it's his promotions, though? No, I mean, his Bob Arum. That's the guy. That's, that's yeah, Muhammad but, Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah. I mean, he had Canelo for a while, De La Hoya. It's, it, it's just, you know what? I think Bud, to tell you the truth, I think he would rather make, you know, 10 or $12 million and maybe make, say, 100 in his career and be himself and be Bud and, you know, uh, People that know boxing know he's one of the all-time greats. Right. But I don't think he cares about the limelight. I don't think he cares about being Floyd Mayweather. I don't think he cares about going everywhere and people knowing him. I think, hey, I got a hundred million. I just don't. That's he's not gonna. He's so, you know, like Floyd Grounded. will say. Like Floyd will say, it's all about the money. It's for the money. It's for the money. The money, which is fine. That's his prerogative to get the money, and he's really good at getting it. Yeah. You yes. know. Where, but I just don't think. I think it's so his integrity. I, I just think it's so important to him to just. Be himself. He he he'll go beat you in the ring. What else does he have to prove? Right. I mean, he says we're gonna fight. To, what what are we arguing about? The fight's gonna happen. Right. I, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm gonna not gonna show fight up. you outside the ring. I'm gonna show up. Right. I mean, but if you get then he might fight. <laughs> yeah. If you get in his face at a press conference, yeah. he, he might still hit you. He's not a punk, but he yeah. I don't think he's gonna go out of the way to do he, it. He, it seems like he fights for the honor. Yeah, I I just think he loves to fight. I mean, he's no punk. If if you're just he's not gonna like. Just be so noble that he's like one of these karate guys that turns the other cheek. I yeah. think if if you're gonna <laughs> one get in this karate guys, it, well, you know, <laughs> you know, like the I know what you're saying you know from a I mean? philosophical from point, a philosophical yeah. point of view, he's not a punk. <laughs> you know, you know where I think if if McGregor would have gotten his face like he got in Mayweather's fight, and that'd be interesting to see oh, promotion. Yeah. If he gets in Bud's face like that, I think Bud takes a swing. I mean, he's just he's just, he's, he's not a bitch. He's I mean, gonna ruin his payday. What? Well, I, that's who he is. I mean, these guys, they can't help it. Man, I don't <laughs> well, know. Well, I mean, Let's hopefully. Make it happen. Well, but the thing about it is, he probably won't start talking about McGregor the same way Mayweather did. Yeah. He pr so it'll probably be a different type of thing. Yeah. But he's the only boxer. And I don't recommend a boxer do MMA. It's a different sport. Yeah. And I would say for 95% of the time, the MMA guy will beat a boxing guy. Mm, maybe 80. With MMA rules. With MMA right, rules. Right, maybe right. not 90. I'll say 80. I'm not as sold as some people yeah. are. I'll say 80. But <laughs> Ray Mercer did it. Knock the guy out, yeah. yeah. With one right former, hand. a former MMA champion, MMA champion, right? I mean, there's it. There obviously it happens the other other way too, right? Um, but I think the caliber of athlete in boxing is far superior. You know, I think some of these guys they get like a Terrence Crawford, the the the, the speed, the coordination, the balance. And here's my analogy, okay? And and I take a lot of flack because a lot of guys down the gym are MMA guys. MMA is huge now; it's as big as boxing. Right. It's big, you know. And <laughs> You know, I might get some hate mail from them or whatnot, but I tell guys, look, there's guys that have been doing MMA three years, four years. They're champions. Any sport you could be a champion at in four years is not a real sport. 
Oh yeah, you you both get hate mail for <laughs> that. <laughs> that would look look. You I mean, it's a fight. They're a great fighter. Right. But right. that'd be like Tom Brady saying, "I picked up a football for the first time four years ago, and I'm the best quarterback in the NFL." Or it'd be like, I mean, that'd be like LeBron James saying, oh, I just started playing basketball at 31. Now I'm the best in the NBA. Yeah, but don't you think there's something very, like, organic with fighting? Like, like you can be a good, brute, tough fighter and possibly still be a champion? I mean, look at Deontay. He started late, didn't he? I know, but, I mean, he's, you know, that's at least 18 or 19 18 and 30. I get and what you're saying, there, No, I get what you're saying, that's though. 14, I get you know, it's still 14 yeah. years. And he'd need a lot of... They brought him up kind of slow. Yeah. I mean, they didn't just throw him to the Wolves to begin with. He had good, he won the, the bronze medal and the bronze Yeah, he bottom. went into the Olympics fast, though. No, no, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. And it's different. I mean, it's... That's different, know, right. Yeah, that's different than the, the, the pro game. But, you know, I just think that uh, those guys... You know, you might say, well... I mean, I guess, to me, your analogy you could use, use for any sport. You said, don't you think there's a lot of tough guys that are good fighters that could be champion for three years? I'd say... Well, don't you think there's a lot of guys that are six foot two twenty that could run fast that could be good football players in three years? <laughs> but the answer would be no, right? Right. Because there's so anything that's a sport, there's there's so many intricate, tiny details to it. There is no boxer that is a world champion that picked up boxing gloves three years ago. Right. No. No. I get your point. I just and, don't. And, and to me, it's like that's why boxers are better paid. You, and I don't think boxers are scared to fight UFC. I, I really don't. I think that if they're making, if I'm Canelo and I'm making thirty-five million dollars a fight, why, why would I, would I why go, would I go to, to the right. to their octagon? Give give him start offering boxers forty million dollars to do a UFC fight, and you'll see a lot of boxers switching to UFC, guaranteed. Yeah, but they're I, not going to take a huge pay cut to go do that. And 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 Crawford probably feels like he he would make that kind of money with the McGregor, so that's probably right. why he threw his name. Right. I was just going to say that. You know, also here's the other part of this: we haven't seen a young primetime boxer try MMA. It, it, it's been guys that are old, past over their the hill, career, past their prime. James Tony, Ray Mercer. Right, because the young guy, there's too much, they have, too much they're to making lose. too much money, there's too much to lose. And that's what I keep telling everybody, that yeah. like you can go get a 36-year-old Pauli Malignaggi. Yeah. That's not the same as fighting the 26-year-old no. Lopez, the guy that's, right. you know, Tia Fama Lopez. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you put that guy in there at 135, just lands With, a I mean, okay, I mean, look at McGregor. Was he five eight, five nine? My height, and he fought at one seventy. His last fight. Yeah, he did. I mean, come on, like Charlo fights one fifty four. He's six. Just, I yeah. mean, I, I'll tell you right now, somebody that would beat him in the cage, another guy, would be that that guy from Russia. That uh, uh, gosh, that light heavyweight champion. Uh, oh, you say Ar- no, Arthur no, Arthur Beatrice, the one. That, oh, oh yeah, Arthur. Oh, that guy's a monster. <laughs> That guy's a monster. Nobody he's, knows about him. No, that's a tough guy. He just fought who? Oh. He just knocked out the guy that almost the guy that almost uh, when the fight the fighter almost died. Um, oh yes. yeah, remember he almost passed yes. away in the ring. The one seventy five. What the heck's his name from Canada? Oh, um, you know who it is. Uh, yeah, I posted it. Yeah, he almost he almost passed away, and the guy that beat him undefeated, he just knocked him out. But I mean, you get a guy like that. There's probably you give me a you give me a UFC guy. Every UFC champ, I'll find a boxer that could beat him. In wow, bro, that's a <laughs> lot, man. Because you know what, the UFC. I'm guys, not that boxer. I'm not saying that's me. Don't they throw me. some of them kicks at their legs, take their knees out. Oh. No, I mean, you know, and that's in. The, you know, I was telling the guy down the gym about. It. I was getting excited because I'm a big Crawford guy, and I just think this guy's amazing. Who were you talking with? Is uh, is it the Muay Thai guy? Uh, yeah, I always got to. What's his name again? Uh, I just talked to him. I just texted him. I want him on the podcast. Oh, Anthony Sinatra. Yes, yes. Yeah. I got, you know, Anthony kind of, he's more, he's, he started boxing. He does more Thai, but he had a, he's more man, of a boxer. He's more of a boxer. Yeah. He got into more Thai, but I think his roots are in boxing. He, he knows, uh, Paulie Spadafore, who I know from Pittsburgh. We know a lot of the same people, but, uh, but I think he kind of thinks, but I, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, when I talk to these guys, I just kind of, I don't know. I just, It'll be interesting. Yeah. I, I, I tell you I what. I hope it happens. And here's why the only I do too. I think it might happen. And that's because, you know, ESPN Plus or ESPN is top rank, and that's who Crawford's with. And there's yeah. no one for him to fight. None yeah. of the PBC guys will fight him. Errol Spence won't fight him. Garcia won't fight him. Pacquiao won't fight him. No, they won't fight him. Not, you know, I think they think they, they wouldn't want to fight him, number one. But number two is they're with a different promotional group. That's, that's what, that's what right. I was referring to before. Right. Was well, it because of promotions? This cross promotions that they have to do 
can stifle a fight. Oh, totally. And PBC that's, that's wants what's, to make their PBC fighters fight each other. Of course. Other. And, and that's what's great about the UFC. And that's what yeah. really is. And that's why people are into it and watch it because you see the best fighters fight each other. Yeah. And another cool thing about it is if you lose, it's not the end of your career. Right. And boxing is like, yeah, you for me, set that I, I never right? care. I was 25 and 11. I didn't care. Yeah. I, but like for a lot of guys, they think like a loss is a death sentence. It shouldn't be like that. Jake Lamont yeah. had 20 some losses. Sugar Ray Robinson. Really? Oh, yeah. Sugar Ray Robinson was. A hundred and something and twenty seven or something. I mean, yeah. Ali lost over ten fights. I yeah. mean, I don't know how it got. I think it got with these big promoters. You had a guy on your network like HBO or Showtime, and they only fought on that network. And then when they lost, it was like, oh my gosh, we got to find somebody. Like they do, they wouldn't let them lose. Right. Like right. it's okay to see, to lose. Like you, the comeback. Like what, how do you bounce? Like I, I don't know. Yeah, you sort be of lose your sentence. steam there because everything is is prompted on that. Yeah. You know, he, is he undefeated? Is he undefeated? Right. You know, who did he lose? To? Oh, he lost to that guy. Right. He must not be. Well, uh, and that's what's kind of cool about MMA. And there's a lot of cool things about it. I don't have nothing, you know, ag- against it. I just think that, you know, boxers, <laughs> the best boxers, not the best boxers would beat him. Right. Like right. Now, don't get me wrong. If, if he goes out there. Crawford could get kicked in the head, and the fight's over. He loses. Right, right. I'm willing to bet a thousand dollars he doesn't. Man, I might want to just bet you. Yeah, so we could just keep, <laughs> we could just we could just keep the juice. Right, keep it in the house. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Why, 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 why give the juice away? Huh? <laughs> so okay, let me switch subjects here. What's going on with your uh, your young kids? Are you gonna? Do you have anything coming up for them? You know, there, we I, I was talking to uh, Jeff Norther, who runs the boys program with me, but. Uh, and we looked at it. We went to 19 bouts in the past uh, seven months. So that's almost oh, like two or three. Yeah. And my wife wanted to kill me. <laughs> yeah. Because every because you know, you're gone. Well, the gym's open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then every weekend I'm in Orlando, Tampa, Miami. Right. The fights normally aren't close around here. So you know, uh, my wife's expecting in a couple of weeks. We have our second our second. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you so me. much. Yeah, it's a really yeah, exciting really time. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so she said, "Listen, the babies do like February 20th." She said, "No fights in February, Billy." Like. No. Yeah. So, you know, there's they a couple shows that. we're going to go yeah. to, and Jeff asked the boys, and a couple of the boys, they're like, ah, we love you, but I don't know if I want to go without you, Billy. So we'll see if they want to fight. I, I all the faith in the world in Jeff, but it's the boys' decision. I don't want to make them fight without right, me. Right. And then if not, we'll get back in March. Um, You know, Marco Island has a huge show every year at the JW Marriott, which is just like the most... Where is that? Uh, Marco Island. Oh, Marco at, Island. Yeah, at the, okay. J, the JW Marriott. I mean, it's just the nicest show really? I've ever been to. Yeah. The, when is this? Yeah, March? I'll get you some tickets. March. It's really kind of like a black tie event. They bring teams in from Ireland and all over the place. Yeah. So, oh, I, I'm yeah, Coach Richie does a great job. But there'll be fights, and we're going to fight. We're going to fight them as much as we can because, you know, the, the kids got to fight. Yeah. And it's tough because boxing is a year round sport. So you got to know kind of when to hold them and when to push them. Like, you know, a couple of the guys down the gym this week, they missed the day. They, it's okay. It, it's right. okay because it's not like football where you play football, then the season's over, then you play football every day. Right. You can't do boxing seven every, days yeah. a week, 365 days a year. So sometimes you got to know when to pull off the gas, when to step on the gas. And that's, I, you know, what I think is part of what makes our team so effective is we know when to do that. Yeah. Guys, do take you, a, Do you have like a, a camp? Uh, do, you, do you like make this camp type uh, you know, atmosphere? It's, uh, it's kind of... It's really individualized. So different kids fight on different dates. We'll put five kids' names in, and maybe one or two get a fight, and then a week later, a couple other kids fight. Oh, so, so it's predicated on it's if they have a if match. If they have a match, right. Okay. But right. but there's always a couple things I do conditioning-wise because at this stage of boxing, you know, I can't take a lot of credit. Most of it's who's in better shape. When you're yeah. a beginning amateur, who's it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, I have all this knowledge and experience, and I, I just chuckle sometimes because also people doing this fancy pad work and pivoting and, and they don't run. Like mm-hmm. then they get in the ring and they get stopped in the first. Or second. When they, as soon as they're out of the gas, the fight's over. Do you, do you really believe that the the running is a huge oh, thing? Oh, sprints is all it is. Sprints? Absolutely, hundred okay. percent. So you want to be, you have yeah. to have your. Those you bursts. have to have your lungs go. <gasps> yeah. And you take that breath in, and you can go all day. I mean, if yeah. you don't run, you cannot be an effective boxer, especially at an early age, because it's so much of who's in better shape. Yeah. It's so much of that fundamentals and who's in better shape. A lot I, of it's not complicated. I hate running. Oh, hey, you, well, you know what I would do, and it was the worst thing to ever do. Before my fights, I'd go to the track, and I didn't have a big team or you know I didn't you know big money behind me. I go to the track by myself with a stopwatch. I would sprint a four hundred meters as fast as I could. Then I'd time a minute break. 
and I'd sprint 400. Oh, jeez. Time as many rounds as I had. If I had that minute eight, break, if that I had, minute break gets shorter. Oh, <laughs> my, it was it was insane. But I mean, I remember just. <gasps> yeah. <gasps> and but you get in the ring and you can just, blah, blah, just it can flow. You just feel you can fight all day. Your wind, your lungs, everything's with you. Like. When you call upon it, it, it got to be there. Right, you have right. to have it in the tank. It doesn't so you're matter. not a big believer of the long distance running then? No. You know, there's a couple things it does. I'd probably, you know, now I know all this stuff. When you're boxing, it's like when you're in it, you can't see the bird's eye view, you know, when yeah. you're in it. Yeah. And I always would run four miles. And I ran it pretty fast. I run four miles in 26 and a half minutes or something like that. Um, but looking back, I should have been all sprints, man. I mean, it yeah. should have been maybe distance one, what, one or two days a week. The thing distance does... Is when you run distance, it does make you a little bit stronger, mm-hmm. I guess, just from running the forward momentum. But it's it's mo- I'd say seventy percent sprints. Yeah, you're talking different uh, muscle fibers too. Yeah, totally. You know, yeah. So some of the stuff I do with my kids, like I remember, I mean, you know, I wasn't the most talented guy in the gym, and obviously I have to have a, a you know, a good amount of talent. I wouldn't have made it as far as I did. But when you start talking about on a world class level. I mean, you could be the most talented guy in Naples, always good, or Collier County, always really good. Then you start talking Southwest State, Florida. Yeah, region. Florida. Right. Southeast, the country. I mean, it's a big country, you know? So I could have been the most talented guy in Niles and still really not that talented. Right. So, so you're, you are from Niles, Ohio. Niles, right outside of Youngstown. Yeah. Um, so anyways, the training techniques I did, I got made fun of 20 years ago. People would laugh. What, Billy, what the hell are you doing now? What are you up to? Things I see people do now all the time. I always had a weighted vest. I put my weighted vest on. I, I hit the bag. I take it off. I feel explosive. Yeah. I had those strength shoes with the platform. Oh yeah, yeah. I would do those. I would do. Yes. And all the, you know, all the, all the, all the, all the black kids down the gym would be making fun of me because they could jump twice as high as I could. Anyways, they didn't have the strength <laughs> shoes. What do you use those <laughs> shoes for? But to me, like I'm, I'm jumping way higher than I was, even though not, right, it's not as high right. as they are. But right. I did all this crazy stuff, you know. And now I see that stuff's becoming more mainstream. Yeah, it's so edgy now. Yeah. The, the technology. The technology is a big part. And, and you know, it, it, and that's what's great. It, that's why the, our gym's called the Sweet Science. Yes. It's the technology, but then it's also, it's an art and it's a science. Right. You know what I mean? There's, there's a fundamentals, but then there's an individual aspect to it. And you have to combine it all to be a successful boxer. You know, there's one thing I want to say about your club. You, ha- you have all ranges of ages in there, and, which is, and women. You know, you got everybody in there. We have every, we have so much fun, I'll tell you. I mean, I was just going through the members. Our oldest member is 85 years old. Jeez. And our youngest one, I think, is seven. We have, I was calling it HBC for a while, Haitian Boxing Club, because I have so many Haitians come down. <laughs> I love my, I, I tell my Haitian brothers that, guys, you're going to keep me open this month. They, Jackson, they, are you listening? They all come down. I was he Haitian? I didn't even yes, know Jackson. Yeah. They all come down and give me support. I mean, just love them. And then I got so many Hispanics, and I got, then I got so many just, you know, white, just, well-to-do white people that yeah. are that are that are seasonal and they come down and they they donate to the nonprofit and they love the gym and they'll work side by side next to the guy that maybe gave me his last hundred dollars in the month to come right. and he's sweating all over the place and it's just it's the most eclectic gym I'm gonna not just say Naples and I've ever been I mean yeah, you have in, in the country in we that. have everybody and yeah. everybody gets along and, and everybody works hard I think is the kind of the core foundation oh yeah it. you sense and that right away and there's a really good energy, energy because mm-hmm. of it. But I mean, and when you have something like that, nobody becomes bigger than the gym. Nobody's more important than the gym. And that's why I try to keep, it's important for me to keep the membership, you know, as reasonable as possible. You know, obviously, you know, when two guys are hitting each other in the ring, your insurance is expensive. I'm, right. I know you own the gym, you know that. <laughs> right. right. And, and real estate in Naples, Naples, Florida is very expensive. It's the right. second the highest zip code in the country for, oh my for goodness. so there's that which I do have to make a living right? right but you know when you start charging two hundred dollars a month like a lot of the places down here do and I see why they do I'm like what yeah I could yeah. see you almost not they're not even really being egregious they kind of when you start doing that people can become bigger than the gym right you know at the hundred dollar rate it's like if you really want to come most people can make it work they can get the hundred if they if it's important to them they really want to Right, they might not get the pair of shoes to go out to dinner, but they can do right. it. And then at the same time, no one becomes bigger than the gym. If someone, if I, you know, I want everybody down there, but if it's if I'm not vibing with you and you're not willing to, you know, if you're causing trouble or I can't say, oh, this guy's giving me two hundred fifty dollars a month, or I he's, can't let him go. He's right. personal training. Right. I don't do I don't do personal training like that. Right. I mean, so 
everybody's equal at the gym, right? Which right. is which is cool. Yeah, tell me a little bit. I know we got to wrap this up in a little bit, but tell me about uh, your Parkinson's program. Uh, the Parkinson's program, my rock steady boxing is awesome. I mean, yeah. we have, gosh, we probably have thirty people in the program, and we offer it five days a week, um, Monday through Friday, and uh, you know these people work so hard. Yeah, you know, you know what I wanted to ask you is now, uh, do they have to be diagnosed with Parkinson's or? Yeah, so they should be. Uh, some people have tremors, but it's mostly right. uh, Parkinson's. Uh, we have other members that are, um, you know, in the seventies, then come down to work out, but not part of the Parkinson's class. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, if they, um, you know, if they have some of the signs of Parkinson's and some of the tremors, and they haven't officially been diagnosed, right. you know, then we'll take them. But, you know. They just work so hard. Yeah, it, that's the first time I stepped in your gym. I came at like noon. Yeah. Somewhere around there or it was early. And it, the, I mean, I, I tell everyone, you know, the goal of the class is that if you didn't have Parkinson's, you would get such an amazing sweat and workout no matter what. And people come in there and work out with their husband or wife that does have Parkinson's. And they, they tell me they haven't worked out like that in years. That's great. These people put and they're so invested because it's their, it's their future. It's their health. Right, right. So they're so into it and they love it. And a lot of we have so many seasonal people and they'll go back to New York or Michigan or Illinois and they'll bring a whole notebook with them of what we do at our rock steady and they'll bring oh, it up no there kidding. with them. Yeah. I mean, nice. we try to do balance, strength, coordination, boxing every day. And Jeff, it's just so exciting because just to help people to see people coming in on a walker and do get on a BOSU ball and do a squat. When yes. I fall off the BOSU ball, have some. <laughs> right. I mean, pe- I mean, this is th- no exaggeration. Right. Like right. I'm not going to some here and lie to you. They'll come in with a walker and two months later, they're standing on a blue BOSU that's ball awesome. doing a squat with no assistance. Yeah. That's awesome that you offer that. Yeah. I, I, that's, I was getting to when I first stopped at your gym, just to find out what it was about. I, I think your wife was working. I said, you know, I'm here to join the club and she's like oh well billy will be here in a couple minutes right now we got our <laughs> our parkinson's class going on. i'm like parkinson's yeah. class. all right this is that's this sorry is she was just texting me she said uh that's why i was just looking over at my phone but no yeah. uh no it's all right it's yeah. all right I, you, if you need to text your wife <laughs> bro do well, it. well she's she's uh nine months pregnant so yeah yeah no it's <laughs> better it, hey we're here having a talk this yeah. is conversation so that does not bother me, and it won't bother anybody else, yeah, um, so. for that matter. But we'll, we'll wrap it up anyway, uh, so you can get home to your wife and your and your daughter. How old's your daughter again, too? You know, she, she too, she'll be three, a uh, couple of weeks, 27th. Of Is she having a sister or a brother? We don't know yet. It's exciting. Uh, so, you know, it, so, you know, we want to be surprised. We were surprised right. for the first one. Um, Girl or boy, it's going to be a boxer, I know. <laughs> If it's a boy, now, yeah, the, yeah. The funny thing is, if you come to my house, you, there's no trace of boxing. <laughs> my wife is the most girly girl. She has princess. My wife, I mean, we went to Disney. I think she wanted to go to Disney. You know, it was <laughs> kind of her. She, she right, had the whole, right. like, we're going to meet this princess and this princess. I'm like, right, right. I'm like, Susie's too. She doesn't know. Right. You know, right. but I mean, so it's like, I walk into that oasis and it's just, I'm, um, it's, it's just, good. it's all women, all a whole different vibe, a whole different tone. And I wouldn't have it another way. I just, you know, I just... It's a good break Yeah, from it is. And I just love them so much. And it's just... It's just so different than what I grew up with. It's so... And it's just... Just, you know, when you grow up as a boy, it's one thing. Just to see how my daughter's being raised. And yeah. they're wearing dresses and they're princess and they're painting their nails. Hey, so. I've always said this, man. When I, I had my two boys and when I had my daughter, it, my life changed. Yeah. I mean, my boys changed my life, obviously. But my do- it, daddy's little girl thing... <laughs> Oh, boy, you're going for a uh, ride. You know, you're going for a I ride. I just want to just keep, you know, yeah. you can't do enough for them. You know, no, it's just so no. darn cute. Well, that's a good way to wrap it up is over some some good family talk. Yeah. Um, Billy, I appreciate you coming out here, spending your time out here. I thank you. I know you just got out of the gym. You know, you work, what, 12-hour day in you the know, gym? It's, it, but it's a lot of fun. And when you're doing something you love, it, you know, it give it actually gives you energy. It doesn't yeah. take away. But I can't thank you enough for having me on. Oh. And, you know, just to be on a show like this with a guy like you, you know, it's amazing. I'm really excited, you know, I appreciate for it. all the things to come for you guys yeah. here on the Matrix it'll, Hour. It'll good. It'll be good. Uh, make sure everyone go check out his app, the Sweet Science Plus, Apple's Apple, Apple iTunes. iTunes store. Yeah. Um, also the YouTube, it, it, w- the name of the channel, the, the Sweet Science Boxing and Fitness. S- the Sweet Science Boxing and Fitness. Go see it. I've seen it already. And you're going to have extra videos coming out, too. Yeah, so every two weeks we're going to release some videos. Um, we'll have another one coming out, I believe. Uh, Should be soon. Yeah, maybe maybe this Sunday we'll get yeah. one out. Yeah. yeah, so that'll be a wrap. Everyone, thank you. And Billy, thank you again. Thanks Appreciate for having me it. on. Right, that's a wrap.